right? So when you use synchronize, right, you avoid synchronizing on the method itself because the method can potentially have a lot of code in it, right? So when when you do use synchronize, try to limit uh, it to a small block of code that is necessary, right? Right. So in this case, um, a, a, a very uh, popular example is when you need to synchronize some data structure um, that is not synchronized in itself, right? Because there are there are data structures that are synchronized, but if you use a uh, like a hash table or a hash map, those are not synchronized. So you have to synchronize um, that data structure in order for you to access it, especially in a multi-threaded environment, right? So when you do synchronize those data structures, right? Ch only synchronize the operations on that data structure. So in this case, if I have a map, right? I, I should only synchronize the part that uh, gets the value from the map or that, you know, updates the, the value in the map, right? And then that's, you know, in that, doing that basically will keep your, your, your code very, very small and the potential for deadlocks will be dramatically reduced right also you want to avoid calling functions in your synchronized block right right because when you do call those functions you are holding a lock and those functions can be either your functions or it could be some other uh, people's functions, you know, basically those are callbacks, right? So if uh, if you cannot guarantee that those functions uh, will not lock something, then you shouldn't call it, right? Because again, those you don't know what other people are going to do with their functions, and those functions can come back and lock the same resource that you already have a lock on, and then if you, they do that that means you can potentially create a deadlock, right? Just like the the the, uh, the 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 Java example that I showed before. Right. So next, um, the the another way to avoid deadlocks is basically not to use a synchronized keyword, right? And there are certain patterns that you can replace uh, the synchronized keyword with by just using. Um, the atomic classes from Java Util um, concurrent, right? So here, right? So here you have this, uh, this, uh, in this, in this uh, package you have data structures such as uh, atomic boolean, right? You have atomic integer, and you have atomic long. Um, what these provide is a, a a data structure where all the updates, delete, and read operations are atomic, right? So you don't have to worry about um, synchronizing them, synchronizing access to those uh, to those to that data, right? Now, also, um, Java Util Concurrent library also has a package called Java Util Concurrent Locks, right? And these and then what this provides you is it provides you a, re a replacement for the synchronized keyword by providing you data structures for locking also. So here um, it provides you also a lock uh, lock mechanism, right? And this is this is going to be a uh, replacement for synchronized. And this lock is basically going to be a mutually exclusive lock, right? Um, there are besides the mutually exclusive lock, you can also have a read write lock, right? So this read write lock allow you to to have a finer control over how things are locked, right? Because um, you can have a read lock, right, which is a share lock, right? So share lock means you know mo multiple threads can have can get the lock, right? And this is mainly for reading data, right? That that just means that. Um, in a, in a in a read lock, you're not going to modify the data, right? So that's why multiple threads can gain access to it. But however, if you're going to modify the data, that means you would want to create you you would want to get a, a write lock to it, right? So this write lock um, will get, will 
well basically the right lock is going to be an exclusive lock so that means that only one thread can have a write lock but multiple threads can have a read lock right okay so so let's talk about um, how to use the Java util concurrent locks right so let's say I don't want to use this synchronized keyword right and I want to use uh, the locks instead right so what I can do is I can re I can do the same okay I can do this so if I have Okay, so instead of using synchronize, I can use a lock, right? And this lock is an interface, right? So therefore, I have to create some, I have to declare some implementation, and um, the only implementation available for this one is a uh, reentrant lock, and reentrant meaning that you can lock again. The same thread can lock, can obtain the lock again. So it's it, in a way it's recursive, right? But again, for every lock, you have to do an unlock, right? So in this case. Um, since here, what I can do is I can say uh, lock, and then the, and then you should always have a try finally, right? And in that finally, you have lock and unlock, right? And again, it's going to be the same here. Since I synchronize on a static method, I am actually locking the same resource, which is going to be the lock using the same lock. Okay, so now if I run it again, it's going to be it should it should do the deadlock, right? Again, um, it basically goes into a deadlock, right? So then, um, let's say that if I want to avoid that deadlock, um, one thing that uh, potentially you could do is to is to have two locks, right? So you can say lock one and lock two, right? So then you have more granular lock, right? So in this case, I want to do lock two and lock two. Right, and in this case, it you know it basically it does what I wanted to do. Right um, now, what if, what if you know I what if you know I cannot have two locks, but I, but what if I wanted to know if there is a deadlock? Right, so um, one thing that you can do is you can again use this try lock, and this try lock has a timeout. Right, so we talked about timeout before, right? So timeout is really a good way for you to to protect yourself against uh, this situation, right? In this case, is the deadlock, right? Deadlock situation. So um, if I were to say I'm going to try to get this lock in five seconds, So in this case, um, I would have to do this. And so if success. Right, else, I can print out something that says uh, OK, so let's see what happens. So there you go. Right, so in this case the try lock waited five seconds and it couldn't get the lock. Right, because the lock was already locked in, in another thread by the by the first task. And then from there the try lock fail returns unsuccessful. And then that is why again we can print out this message saying this possible 
deadlock, right? So this is kind of a, a way of detecting deadlocks, right? And if we were to do invoke later, right? In this case, we avoid the deadlock, right? So therefore, again, this try lock should succeed immediately. And then from there, um, you should not have any deadlocks.